Welcome back to Yahoo Finance's coverage of the Goldman Sachs Communicopia Conference in San Francisco. Really special guest right now in Yahoo Finance. That is AMD Chair and CEO, Dr. Lisa Su. Lisa, good to see you. I was telling my team, I've been talking to you for 10 years. I've never seen you in person. So it's good to see you. <laughs> it's great to see you as well, Brian. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Are you kidding me? So I listened to your webcast. You were just off your fireside chat. And I think how you ended it is how I want to start this conversation. Uh, you reminded a lot of investors this is a super cycle for AI. Take us through that a little bit, and, and how do you see AMD playing in that? Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, we've you know really talked about what we think is the potential of you know AI in this you know accelerator area. Um, I believe this is a market that will grow to you know 400 billion dollars by 2027, which is huge, and it is an AI super cycle. You know, sometimes people get caught on you know what's happening today, what's happening tomorrow, the next quarter. What I'd like to say is you have to take a step back and look. Um, as a tech company, it's our job to make bets that are you know really for three to five years out. And, you know, uh, five years ago, we thought AI was going to be super important. It's much more important today. It's a much larger cycle today than I would have expected five years ago. Uh, we're making big bets now for the next five years. And the key is there's no one size fits all in this technology race. It's all about end to end AI. So whether you're talking about the largest cloud environments or you're talking about what you do with the embedded and edge space or you're even talking about, you know, AI PCs. You're going to need the right AI computing for the right workload, and that's our job at AMD. I like that you sent a message also, to uh, at the end of your presentation. There's not just one company playing in this super cycle. Talk to us about that. that that's absolutely true because, you know, again, if you start with, uh, depending on your workload or, um, you know, which customer, you're going to need different types of compute. And, you know, what we've learned dealing with our largest customers is um, this is about deep partnership of how you optimize hardware and software together. So, look, we're super excited about the progress we've made in AI. Um, our MI300X was just launched less than a year ago. It's the fastest growing product that we've ever seen at AMD. So this year, you know, last year it was maybe less than $100 million of revenue in AI. This year it'll be greater than four and a half billion. So that's pretty nice, but this is really just the beginning of that cycle. And we're super excited about what we see going forward. Of course, that chip, uh, that new chip, very powerful and very important. What does the backlog look like for next year? Well, the key for us is uh, we've actually accelerated our um, AI roadmap. So when we look at you know, how fast AI is moving and how fast the models are moving, we need to have the latest and greatest uh, technology every year. So we actually are now on a one-year cadence of new products. So later this year, we're going to announce a new product, our MI325. Next year, we'll have an MI350 uh, series in 2026, an MI400 series. So you're going to get to know AMD products really well. Um, and the key is uh, we believe that uh, you know, we can have um, a very significant piece of you know, both um, you know, training and inference of these you know, large language models. What are some AI. of those newer chips that you just talked about? How will they be different? different than what you have in the market now? You know, the key is more performance at lower cost. I mean, that's the, the, the bottom line. So um, for the largest data center operators, you want to be able to train your models as fast as possible. You want to be able to ask your model questions at, you know, at low cost. This is all about total cost of ownership. And the way we get there is we put more computing on a single chip. And you know, if you know, uh, remember, Brian, one of the things that we've really pioneered is this idea that you could, you know, actually break up these large, powerful AI uh, capabilities uh, with um, something called chiplets, or you know, really breaking it up into different technologies. This is a huge advantage for us. It's one of the reasons that we are, um, you know, really leading in some of the key workloads today, and we look forward to where we'll be able to take this in the next generations. What has surprised you about the build out of AI infrastructure in this country? You know, what has um, actually really surprised me is just how fast the technology is moving. I mean, what we are seeing is we are seeing whether you're um, a large hyperscaler or you're an enterprise customer or you're the newest AI startup, it's all about speed. Um, we're all learning at an incredibly fast pace. You know, even ourselves at AMD, I would say that, you know, we've learned more and done more in the last nine to 12 months than in the previous, you know, number of years because the market is moving so fast. And this is a place where innovation begets more innovation. And so we're learning a ton on the software side. We're learning a ton about what is the most efficient way uh, to get um, you know, these, uh, these products to market. We've done a number of acquisitions, uh, which I'm very excited about. 
about. Can't keep up with all these deals, Lisa. <laughs> well, look, we're, we're a growth company, and as a growth company, yeah. our job is to invest and invest ahead of the curve. Um, we've done now uh, you know, three or four acquisitions, three in the last, let's call it, year, and then we just announced a new one. Uh, Xilinx Z and then ZD, ZT. Yeah, we've, we've done, um, Xilinx was actually back in 2022, if you can believe that. Uh, we did Xilinx, we did Pensando on the networking side. They were very AI hardware uh, and software centric. Um, we've done several software acquisitions, mainly so that we could make it easier for our customers to adopt AMD architectures. And then most recently, last month, we um, announced our um, intent to acquire ZT Systems, which builds out you know, sort of the system infrastructure. And you know, the key is all of these pieces are important, but we've been investing for a number of years, both organically and inorganically, so that we can be that computing partner of choice uh, to um, you know, those who need high performance compute. You know, this is, a, of course, a very exciting time for all things AI, but the supply chain is not diversified. And you talked a little bit about this in your Firestar chat here. I mean, how do you, and TSMC, great partner, it sounds like, for, for AMD, but how do you, how do you diversify from having all of your production in Taiwan? Well, look, um, we're always thinking about supply chain resiliency. I think we all have to, uh, just given you know, the world's reliance on computing and high performance compute. Um, you know, TSMC is a great partner for us. Um, we do want more diversity in the supply chain. Uh, we are actively uh, both um, you know, putting our uh, tape outs or our new product designs um, into TSMC in Arizona, as well as you know, looking forward to ramping those. And we're going to continue to work with the overall ecosystem System. You know, I'm a, a big fan of the CHIPS Act and the work being done so that we could um, increase the domestic manufacturing and we're going to continue to work on it as we go forward. Do, is it an economic risk for the U.S. to still have all, a lot of so much production overseas like this? I think we're in a place where uh, we must have geographic diversity. And I think the, um, you know, the work that has been done over the last few years, both uh, CHIPS Act on manufacturing, as well as, uh, Brian, I'm a big fan of the R&D efforts because the work that's being done in the National Semiconductor Technology Center to build a semiconductor R&D footprint is extremely strategic. So those things have to be done. Uh, there's no you know, one, uh, you know, one thing that's going to make this all of a sudden better. I think we need to keep working on investing. And you know, this is about public-private investment uh, to uh, really strengthen you know, the semiconductor resiliency. Before I let you go, um, what has it been like to just lead this transformation at, at AMD? And I mean, how much longer do you want to be doing this? <laughs> I mean, you've, you've been at AMD for so long but you've led this amazing transformation and I'm just curious on what what else do you have left to do? Well, look, I am um, extremely fortunate. Frankly, all of us in the technology industry are extremely fortunate that we are working on technology that matters. Like, that's what gets me up every day is, you know, the products and the technology that we're working on uh, really does change the world, really does impact, um, you know, sort of how we're going to experience um, services, really does impact how businesses operate. Uh, and um, for that, like, there's no better place to be. I mean, this is incredible incredibly fun. Uh, and I actually think, you know, as fun as the last 10 years have been, when you look at how technology has evolved, the next 10 are going to be much, much more exciting because you can really see we're unlocking sort of with the power of AI and computing, we're unlocking things that we never believed were possible before. Yeah, uh, really working on some amazing things over there uh, at AMD. AMD chair and CEO Lisa Sue. Let's uh, hopefully not wait another 10 years to, to hang out in person again. Appreciate it.